hello and welcome to my science tutorials in today's video we are going to be looking at Ken Marktis so before we start if you are new to my science tutorials kindly consider subscribing so that you don't miss any of our tutorials on biology chemistry mathematics and physics so let's begin so we want to first of all start by looking at what a motion is okay so a motion is the continuous change in the position of a body relative to a reference point so as you can see we have this gentleman over here standing at position A. Now, <clears throat> this gentleman is not in motion until he moves from position A to position B, which is the reference to a point that we are uh, talking about in the definition. So, let's have him move. So, as he moves from point A to point B, he is undergoing motion. And then, this motion is relative to the point A and B. So, this is what we refer to as motion. So, the individual or the person or a particle or a body is moving from one point to another point is what we termed as motion now let's let's have the definition of kinematics itself so this is the study of the motion of a particle in which the force behind the motion is not considered but only the displacement velocity and acceleration so in kinematics we only consider the displacement the velocity the acceleration but not the force behind the movement of the body we are not interested in the force but we are only interested in the displacement the distance the velocity the acceleration taken by this particle in motion that is what the study of kinematics is all about so before we go into solving uh, examples about kinematics let's have a look at the equations of motion so we have first of all we have the first equation which is given by V is equal to U plus AT. Then we have the second equation, S is equal to UT plus half AT squared. Then we have the third one, V squared is equal to what? U squared plus 2AS. Now, V over here is the final velocity of the body. So the final velocity of the body is what the V stands for. U is the initial velocity. The initial velocity of the body or the particle. Now, A is the linear acceleration. Not the acceleration due to gravity, but just the linear acceleration of the body or the particle. T is the time taken for the body to undergo the motion that we are describing. And then S is what? The distance covered by the motion. The distance covered by the particle in motion. So these three equations are very, very important when we want to solve practical examples on linear motion. So we have the final velocity is equal to the sum of what the initial velocity and the product of acceleration and time. And we have the distance is equal to what? The initial velocity multiplied by the time plus half the product of what? The acceleration and then the time squared. And then we have the velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus twice the product of what? Acceleration and the distance. So with this basic introduction to kinematics and motion, let's have a look at an example. So example number one, the question is, a traveler starts walking from rest and travels 200 meters in 10 seconds. Find his acceleration. So that this traveler is at a point, let's say A. And then once he is in motion, he moves from point A to a point B. So yes, so he stopped here. So this is from point A to point B. This is um, the motion that this traveler has undertaken. And then the distance from A to B over here is what we are giving as what 200 meters and then the time taken for the man to move from point A to point B the time is equal to what 10 seconds so now that we have the distance we have the time we are being asked to find the acceleration so first of all we write the parameters as I've written over here so let's rewrite the parameters that we have so we have the distance s to be what 200 meters we have the time taken to be what 10 seconds so we are asked to find the acceleration which we do not know so basically from there we use the distance formula s is equal to what ut 
plus half at squared. Okay. Now, because they are saying that uh, the traveler starts from what? From rest. The from rest over here means what? The initial velocity of the traveler is zero. That is at the point E, it was not moving. So the initial velocity is what? Zero. So it means our u over here is what? Zero. So we have zero t, okay, plus half a t squared. So this goes away. So we have the distance, which is 200, is equal to what? Half the acceleration, which we are finding. And then the time is 10 seconds. So we have 10 squared. So we have 200 is equal to half a. Then this becomes what? 10 square is 100. Now we multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction that we have. So we have 400 is equal to this cancels this. So we have 100a. So from here we can see what? 100a is equal to what? 400. So we divide both sides by 100. By 100. Then we have our acceleration to be what? 4 meters per second squared. So it means it's the acceleration of this traveler uh, to move from point A to point B, covering a distance of what 200 meters is what 4 meters per second square. Now let's have a look at another example, example number two. So we have this track over here, a track moving at what 20 kilometers per hour, accelerates to a speed of 30 kilometers per hour in 20 seconds. Find the distance traveled in meters during the period of acceleration. Okay, so let's have a pictorial view of what we are we mean by this. So we are saying the track at its initial point accelerates at a speed of what 20 kilometers per hour. So it means at this point where the track is currently, it has what it is moving. We assume it is moving at what 20 kilometers per hour. Now when it started to accelerate or is moving it is the speed has increased or it has accelerated to a new velocity that we have over here which is what 30 kilometers per hour and then the time taken for it to move from 20 kilometers per hour to 30 kilometers per hour is what the time is what 20 seconds we are being fine uh, we have been asked sorry to find the distance traveled in meters so we are going to find the distance which we do not know so let's go ahead now before we go we are the distance we are supposed to find is in meters so we need to do some small conversions so we have 20 kilometers okay per hour that is the this is the initial velocity now this is equivalent to 20 kilo is times 10 raised to the power 3 so meters over an hour is 60 seconds times 60 minutes, so it's what? 60 times 60, which is 3,600 seconds. So the initial velocity in this example is what? Uh, 20,000 divided by 3,600, which is what? 5.56 meters per second. Now, the final velocity is what? 30 kilometers per hour. So we have 30 times 10 raised to the power 3 divided by 3600. So it means our final velocity is what? 8.33 meters per second. All right. Now that we have that, we, have, we are going to use the formula V square because we have final velocity is equal to initial velocity. We also have that plus twice acceleration times distance. Now, if you want to use this formula, it means we lack one uh, parameter. We have the initial velocity, which is 20. We have the final velocity, which is 30. We have uh, the time over here, but we don't have acceleration. We are find, we are told to find what the distance traveled. So we need to find the acceleration first. Now, we know acceleration is the time rate of change in velocity, which is what? Delta V over T. So it means the change in velocity of the body as it moves from 20 kilometers per hour to 30 kilometers per hour, which is what? The V2 minus V1. Or this can be V minus U. Okay, it's the same T all over T, 
all over t okay so the acceleration at this point will be what um 8.33 minus 5.56 all divided by the time 20. so if we input this into the calculator we are getting 0 0.13 1385 meters per second square so this is our acceleration now that we have the acceleration we can put the acceleration the initial velocity the final velocity into this equation and then we get our distance s so let's go ahead and do that okay so we still have the formula v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s so our final velocity we calculated was what 8.33 all squared is equal to the initial velocity is what 5.56 all squared plus twice the acceleration is 0 0.1385 then s the distance that we are supposed to find so this is what 69.389 then we bring this to the other side of the equal to sign so minus 30.914 is equal to 0.277 s so if we subtract this two we are going to get 38.475 is equal to 0.277 s so we divide both sides by 0.277 and then we have our value of s the distance to be equal to what 138.89 meters or approximately 139 meters so it means the distance traveled from the point where the track started moving from 20 kilometers per hour and accelerates to 30 kilometers per hour the distance traveled during the acceleration is what 139 meters all right let's have a look at another example so example number three said a car moving in a straight line with uniform deceleration has a velocity of what 40 meters per second at a point a so it means at the point a we have our velocity of the car to be what 40 meters per second all right let's have this car in motion so the car is decelerating which means the velocity is decreasing as the car what progresses so we have a car moving in a straight line with uniform deceleration has a velocity of what 40 meters per second at point a this is what we have here 20 meters per second at point b so it has decreased from 40 to 20 meters per second after it has moved from point a to point b and comes to rest at point c so it it came to a rest at point c which means the velocity at point c is what zero so we have zero meters per second now where bc the distance between b and c is what 50 meters so the distance from here to here let me get this is 50 meters okay so we have to calculate the distance a b so the distance a b we do not know the time taken to cover a to b we do not know and then the time from the car to decelerate from a to c we do not also know so that is what we are supposed to find so i the distance a b all right so for us to find the distance a b first of all we need to find what the acceleration of the car okay we need to find the acceleration of the car and we can do that by using the formula v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s because we know the car is decelerating okay so we need to know the rate at which the car is decelerating before we can go on to solve anything so the only parameters that we have to help us is this over here and the distance over here now at this point in time this is the initial velocity and then this is the final velocity because the car is what decelerating not accelerating so we have our final velocity is zero squared is equal to 20 squared plus 2 a the distance is what 50 meters so we have 20 square is what 400 and we use it to cross the equal to sign we have negative 400 
is equal to the product of 2 and 50 is what? 100A. So we divide both sides by 100. We have our acceleration, which is the deceleration in this case, to be what? Negative 4 meters per second squared. So that is our deceleration. So now that we have the rate at which the car is decelerating, we can go ahead to calculate the I, which is what the distance AB. So the distance AB, we are going to use the same formula, which is V square, because what U square plus 2AS. Now, because we are looking at the distance AB, this is now our initial velocity. This is our final velocity. So we have 20 square is equal to what 40 square plus 2 into bracket negative 4 s so we just go ahead and solve this and we get our answer so this square is equal to what 400 minus 40 square is what 1600 and we bring it across the equal to sign so it becomes negative 1600 is equal to what negative 8 s so this is uh 400 minus 1600 will give us what negative 1200 is equal to negative 8s. We divide both sides by negative 8. So we have our distance to be equal to what? 150 meters. So it means the distance from A to B is what? 150 meters. And you can see as shown by the diagram, which is technically not drawn to scale, but you can see the distance between A and B is what? Greater than what? B and C. Now let's move on to the ii aspect of the question now the ii aspect of the question is telling us to what calculate the time taken to cover the distance a to b so for the time taken, we are simply going to use v is equal to u plus a t now we know this is 40 meters per second this is 20 and then this is zero so we know our final is 20 our initial is 40. Our acceleration is negative 4. And then our time is what we don't know. So we have 20 minus 40 is equal to negative 40. So we have negative 20 is equal to negative 40. Divide both sides by negative 4. And we get our time to be what? 5 seconds. So that is the time taken. So it took the vehicle five seconds to decelerate from the velocity of what 40 meters per second to what 20 meters per second and cover the distance from a to b so let's look at the final aspect of this question so the last part is what the time taken to cover what a to c which means from the initial point to the final state so we're going to use this v is equal to u plus a t now the final velocity here is 0, then the initial velocity is 40, our deceleration is negative 4, and then our time we do not know. So we bring the negative, uh, this is, they are multiplying each other, so we bring it to the other side of the equal to sign. So we have what, 40 is equal to 40, so we brought this to the other side of the equal to sign, so we divide both sides by 4. So we have our time to be equal to what? 10 seconds. So it means the distance taken for the car to move from point A to point C is 10 seconds. So thank you so much for watching. This is how we solve basic and simple problems on kinematics and linear motion. I hope you've learned something new and this tutorial was helpful. If you find it helpful, kindly consider subscribing and then smash that like button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.